Hey Virgo, welcome to your reading. I'm Empress Rose and these are general readings. So we take what works and we leave what doesn't. Uh, if I don't catch a wavelength on this reading, check your other major placements, your sun, moon, rising, and sometimes Venus. People view that as a major placement too. Uh, and I'll post the pictures of the spread at the end. We're going to start off with this Oracle of Mystical Moments deck for an intuitive vibe of where we might be going here. Um, and these cards, some of the cards refer to specific events in our lives and some of the cards refer to uh, things that are kind of always true. So the cards that are always true, no matter if you're getting it drawn or not, the cards, the deck is just trying to call your attention to that truth or that that thing and, and wants you to pay atten particular attention to it this week. Or in the, you know, I think of these as, as being sort of situated in the front third of maybe a two to three week period. Even though I do them weekly. All right, Virgo, you don't want to talk. Again, is this... <laughs> you just got the I don't want to talk card. <laughs> That's really funny, and that's I've been doing this for a while here, and uh, that's the only card that came up. Okay, you are not communicative right now. That's okay. We got things. I don't know. Guess that's okay. Oh, that was really cool. They kind of match. Um, so here's like a bird. This is the one that came out first. Um holding back, wanting to say something, but not, uh, holding back on something, it, tr uh, attempting to not communicate. Uh, there's something in you that definitely wants to fly forward, some sort of idea, some sort of communication that is, is here. It's ready to go. It wants to go, but you are holding it back. You know, she's, she's uh, the, yeah, she's holding back this, this message. Looking to the future, thinking about something in the future, um, but not quite ready to talk about it. Um, and, and just physically almost um, with some, some amount of physical effort holding back a communication. Something that you want to say, uh, maybe you even need to say. You might be feeling too proud to say. Um, and then we have Mermaid's Love. I love this card. It's about healthy relationships. It's really beautiful. It's about relationships between opposites and how the and how they are healthy. So this could be a relationship card, or this could also be a work card where you're going into a work where you're bringing the balance. You're bringing the opposite thing. So if the work is very logic oriented, you are the person that's bringing the creativity into that. Um, or if the if the work is very, it's a, if the business is very creative, you'd be the one bringing the the, um, the sort of uh, spreadsheets and, and budgeting aspects to the creative industry. Um, and this could just be two parts of yourself coming together, meeting together. So let's talk about these two characters here, understanding that they can relate to jobs, relationships, and different parts of ourselves, okay? So we have, we have the intellect here. We have someone who's very intellectual, very uh, spreadsheet oriented, has a lot of ideas, works in the field of ideas, is comfortable in the field of ideas. Uh, and, um, and that's his world is, is all, and these genders can be just, just like, these can be different aspects of yourself. Just like one of these could actually be a business or a company. If we're talking a job reading, uh, they can also be any gender that they, that they are. Okay. So, or non-gender, or any place on the gender spectrum here. It doesn't really matter. It more matters about the characteristics of each aspect. So we have the bird-like aspect. The, the, bird, the bird here is holding back. So I feel like it's this, this part here, the intellectual thing is, is holding back, not wanting to talk. The intellectual counterpart here. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's about spreadsheets, um, ideas, professorial, uh, someone who works in maybe business and, uh, in the upper, uh, management, um, talking more about the ideas of the business and what the business and the goals and, and that kind of thing. So, um, so they work in, they're comfortable in the world of ideas. They love the world of ideas. They love their world. They're comfortable in it and they're confident in what they bring to any situation, any job, any relationship. And then we have, and they're, they're kind of outwardly focused, more focused on the world and what's going on and, and trying to assess that and analyze that very analytical. 
And then we have this aspect here, this um, emotional, intuitive mermaid aspect. And, um, and she's from the sea and more inwardly focused and um, is very, that's, that is her home. She's very comfortable there. She thrives there. So this is about two things coming together, um, maybe two parts of ourselves, maybe, as I said before, all those different possibilities for the entities involved here. So two entities coming together, but they come together out of confidence. Neither one is saying, I suck. Uh, intellect is dumb. I wish I was more like you. Um, and she's not saying emotions are dumb and stupid. I wish I was more intellectual. And they're coming together, um, both of them in a lot of confidence and in a lot of comfort in their worlds. Their worlds are not going to be able to mix. So that's, that's a little bit of the catch here um, in this beautiful relationship um, is that the worlds don't actually end up being able to mix very much. Um, but they can meet, they can meet and it's, a, it's a, they both have a lot of self-respect and respect for the other person and for the other world. So that's how opposites attract, right? Um, but they can't be attracting. It's not, it's not sustainable if they attract out of a place of need, a place of insecurity, a place of saying like my, wh who I am and what I am isn't good enough and yours, you're better. And I want to attach myself to that because that, that can't last for a variety of reasons. Um, but, uh, but so this is, but this mermaid's love is talking about a very good, um, mutually supportive love of equals and, um, and people that are happy with who they are and proud of who they are. So that's how opposites attracting actually can work. So often it's the other way of like, ah, oh, I'm so shy. I really think I should be more outgoing. Here's this person that's outgoing. I will go attach myself to them and they can be, um, I don't know, outgoing for the both of us. But then at some point in the relationship or through your life, you start to appreciate who you are and like who you are. And then you're like, oh, I, wow, I'm not actually worse than this person. And anyway, there's a lot of reasons why it doesn't work unless both people love who they are and are comfortable in their worlds. All right, Virgo, here's your past, your present, your inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, your to-do list, and your possible outcome. Sorry. Sorry about the week ahead. No, there's only one. There's only two kind of, th okay, three. There's a little bit of like difficulty here. Um, in your recent past, you have six of wands. I think you've gotten this one before uh, a couple times. This is um, this is parade. This is you being successful. This is a victory parade. You being very successful and it being benefiting your community, people being very happy for you, very excited for you. Your success was your community's success, and there was a lot of celebration for it. A lot of recognition here. You know, you're coming in with laurels and a white horse here. I mean, this is you've got. There's a lot of recognition for your accomplishments and for your achievements. And you really benefited your community with that. And they recognized that and were very happy about it. In your current situation, you have this Ace of Pentacles. This could be work coming in. This could be money coming in. Uh, there's a new beginning here in, in work or money or something like that. It's being, it's, I don't wanna say it's being gifted, but it is, it is sort of this open hand thing um, of somebody's, somebody's uh, receiving in your present situation, you're receiving a, um, some sort of gift, some sort of new beginning, um, yeah, dealing with money or work or some sort of pentacle, some sort of a new beginning in physicality. Like the pentacles are all about what's physical, what we can touch, what we can feel. So anything having to do with that. I mean, we've got our, our wands, which are inspiration, creativity, sexuality. Um, what's that word there's a word for that that like means all of them and i misused it in high school and it was very embarrassing but only retrospectively once i understood the libido yes the libido word can be used um for creativity but it's very rare and you should not be using that um that way anyway was it libido no i don't think so no it was not libido it was something else all right now i'm all... okay anyway um so uh it was something else and i used it you know had gotten out my thesaurus and hadn't looked out, looked up um, what the words actually individually meant. Oh my God, I think I'm blushing. Um, so anyway, Ace of Pentacles, a new beginning here uh, in in something physical, something in reality. There's a new new beginning coming in for you. 
uh, in your hopes, your hopes is for the sun. Your hope is for a lot of growth, a lot of um, clarity, a lot of happiness, a lot of joy. I mean, this is just standard hope material right here. Um, growth, clarity, joy, happiness, uh, the sun card. Can't get better than the sun card. So you're hoping for a maximum fulfillment here. Um, what's at issue though is this emperor card, the emperor reverse to sort of uh, what's at issue is sort of a puppet master, some controlling energy, some um, super controlling energy, some uh, which is always based, of course, in insecurity. Um, so if someone's trying to control you, they're insecure um, and don't feel like they can handle, you know, you being independent and making whatever choices and decisions you want. You can't really change that and you can't really help people that are insecure feel secure um, unless they want that. So and typically they don't. Uh, so, and they're, if they want that and they're asking for that, that's great, but that's not usually how it goes. So don't try to make insecure people, when you see the controlling behavior, don't try to placate them because, um, it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help. Uh, don't try to assuage their, anyway, assuage their insecurities. Like you can acknowledge that it's coming from a place of insecurity. And I guess you can deal with that in a different level and in a different way, but, um, but don't, you don't need to like pump up their egos what um because that's not going to help the insecurity actually it only seems like it would but it doesn't so anyway we're talking about insecurity here and uh someone feeling very insecure and reacting to that by being controlling and being um uh, micromanaging and controlling here so that's what's at issue and you don't have you're not feeling like you have a lot of power or a lot of say or this could be you responding to a situation although everything in this top row is gorgeous and beautiful and lovely um, so I don't know why you'd be responding to a situation by being controlling um, but you might be or there might be someone else in the situation who's being very controlling um, taking power that's not really theirs uh, feeling, I mean, there, it's just basically insecure, but also re re reacting to that by trying to control their entire environment and make sure everything's perfect because um, deep down they, they can't handle anything going not quite perfectly their way. So, um, I mean, I, I guess you can like deal with people's insecurity, but you have to be careful how you do that and not make the monster worse uh, by by. Yeah, not you can't don't make the insecurity or the the need the power grab um, worse by giving them more power in hopes that that would make them feel more secure. Um, it does not. And so um, so yeah, there's some, there's some some sort of power dynamic here where you're feeling powerless and someone else is is probably being the puppet master um, or being controlling. You're being controlled by something else by somebody um, maybe an authority over you or somebody in your life. Uh, there is there is some sort of control issue going on here. Um, and this makes sense because this is funny because I got the Pep Pep Master vibe from this. Um, and then in your environment, you have the devil. So in one of my decks, the devil is is um, actually depicted as the puppet master, um, but in an inspiring way in that deck. It's very inspiring how, you know, you don't know what possessed you to do this wonderful, amazing thing. But um, this is... This is about addiction. So there could be some, some addiction in your life. Uh, someone around you could be dealing with addiction, could be dealing with separation from your true path. Uh, there's this devil energy around you and it's combining here in my mind, in my reading with this uh, emperor, this reversed emperor, this power monger, control freak. And this is someone in your environment most likely or something in your environment um, that is controlling and controlling um, you and not allowing you the freedom to follow your heart, the freedom to follow your dreams to connect. The devil is anything that separates us from a deep connection with ourself, with our intuition, with our inner guidance system. Um, so that is most clearly depicted uh, and understood as addiction issues, um, needing something, um, craving something, uh, and, and that ultimately separating you from an ability to make free will choices so with this emperor in reverse here and this devil card i'm seeing something that's controlling um, and uh and separating you from your true path from your happiness that you would like um so this separation from that um 
And uh, yeah, this controlling, oh, where'd that thought go? Urgh. This controlling um, energy here um, in your environment, some sort of addiction, some sort of, something that's not allowing you to follow your intuition, to uh, build that strong connection with your inner inner self or, or to follow that strong connection. You may be getting a, a strong, strong impulse, a strong intuition here, um, but you're not allowed to follow it. You're not being able to follow it. There's a control. There's a lot of control. There's, this is an, okay, so this is an external control issue. Some, something or some situation or some person um, is controlling you externally, uh, separating you from, from your, your path, from your loves, from your uh, passions. Your to-do list ha is confusing the crap out of me. You got Eight of Swords. So Eight of Swords is this energy of um, helplessness, of, of, a, of mon learned helplessness, a mantra of I can't do it, I can't move forward, I can't go anywhere. I mean, this could be of just uh, surrendering. Hmm. I mean, it's got a little bit of this vibe here, wanting to, to move forward with something, wanting to communicate something, but feeling like you can't, wanting to move, but not moving. So the Eight of Swords energy, let's just discuss this and see what we come up with here. So Eight of Swords is being stuck, feeling stuck, when you're not actually stuck, but allowing, here we have these ropes again, and we're talking puppet master issues, and I keep, I keep seeing you sort of tied tied down or tied up, um, tied like, like, like a marionette puppet thing. So this is binding you, but in the eight of swords, it's usually your own thoughts, your own mantras telling you, I can't do this. I can't go this direction. I can't make these decisions. I can't leave this. Everyone walking by you is like, what is this chick's problem? Like she's got, she can walk away. Why is she crying here? She's the swords are all behind her. She can just walk forward. You know, her legs aren't bound. She can unbind these, these ropes are and even all that tight she can unbind everything and see if she chooses to see so is your to-do list to remain where you are even though you could go forward and you could leave the situation and you could leave this control you're being controlled by something and in some way I'm where this is in your external you're being controlled by something externally but this being you, the energy you need to come into it's like you're consenting to the control you're consenting to be controlled um, and you believe that you should be controlled and you believe that this this thing should be controlled so I guess my my problem with this card in this situation is that are you being called to just stand still I would like to see the uh, the hangman card here then in this in this situation if you're being called to just stay just hold still and don't move. Just hold still and don't move forward. If that's what you're supposed to be doing, but the eight of car, the eight of swords has this implication to it that you are to free yourself. So if you, but then I'd like to see the six of swords here. If you're freeing yourself, if that's what you need to do, is 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 free yourself. So I'm a little torn on what your to do list is here. I've never quite had this experience in a reading before. I mean, I've had cards show up where like, what the, what the hell does that mean in that position? And I can usually figure it out, but this is, this is confusing me a little bit. I mean, is it the realize, because usually the Eight of Swords is realizing that the only thing trapping you here is your own mantra and your own mind. You know, we always have a choice. I, my least favorite phrase is I didn't have a choice. You did have a choice. The choices may have been shitty and one of them may have been a much better than the other one, but you, you did have a choice. Um, so but you saying, I can't do this. I could never do that. That it reminds me of the phrase, this, this eight of swords card reminds me of a phrase I, I've heard someone say, someone in my life say a lot as, oh, I could never do that. Oh, I couldn't do that. Oh, I couldn't do that. You know, and it's just, you can, you can actually. And then, and then once I got them to see that, that, that mentality was the problem, they were able to do the thing that they said for 20 years that they could never do. And then they did it. Um, so 
uh, but it, but they had to change the mantra from, oh, I could never do that to like, I, I could do that. It might be hard. I might need to get some advice, but I guess I could do that. So maybe that's where you need to go is like start considering that you might not be as trapped as you think you are. Just start playing with that idea that you do have more choices than you think you have, that you do have a choice and start. I don't know that you're necessarily moving forward, but you're starting to understand that the situation has required your consent to a certain degree. And you have consent and that can be a hard, hard thing to look at that I, I did agree to, to be controlled like this. I made choices and I made decisions and I had thoughts in my mind that, that controlled me and, and made me agree to this. Anyway, so moving on from the problematic card in the, in the placement here, I love your possible outcome. This three of cups, this is like a, a beautiful soulful sharing. Here we go back up to the top. The energy from the top here of this this beautiful happiness um, and and everyone sharing in your happiness and here we go possible outcome uh, is this three of cups this beautiful soulful sharing almost singing together I get such a choir vibe here you know choirs they they run the whole gamut of emotions you know there's sad songs and and strident strong songs and about being strong and courageous and there's songs about love and there's songs about softness and there's songs about gentleness and there's songs about peace and there's songs about success and there's songs about failure and just this sharing this beautiful soulful sharing um, with friends in this three of cups a, a meeting of friends that is is just beautiful and and um, yeah meeting up with some friends so that's a possible outcome here um, and this Eight of Swords is confusing the crap. Okay, I will take one card on Eight of Swords. Can we get some clarification? What is this to-do list? Last time I did this, I got even more confused because I'm already confused. But what's an, what's an alternate reading for our to-do list? What's something else that we could get in our to-do list for Virgo at this 22 minutes in? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't leave it be. Questions. Is there anything? Get again. More questions and answers here. Okay. Returning to some sort of source, so some sort of source, what we have the well. Okay, I'll tell you what we got. We have the well, we have the nine of swords, so internal nightmare, the problem is internal. Uh, we've got that. We've got the tower, we've got realizations, epiphanies coming in, possibly that you've consented to be controlled in a way that you did not realize you were agreeing to, uh, that the nightmare, that the, the, the nightmare is internal. Um, so this could be the tower moment coming in here with this realization, this understanding that you're not trapped. Um, this two of swords, a very stubborn energy. You may continue, you might need to continue to, this is stubborn, like refusing to see like here, here you can't see and, and you're frustrated because you think your problems are external, but they're actually internal here. You've chosen to, you're choosing to just not see, like you can see, this is the denial card being in denial about something. Um, and having those realizations come in, putting down the burden of this uh, this uh, ten of wands here, putting down the burden of other people's expectations. You might be being hem feeling hemmed in by other people's expectations, um, and and refusing to move because you you don't want to see that the problem is internal and could be fixed uh, with your own mentality. But there is a sense of returning to the source, returning to some sort of origin place, the well uh, rejuvenation as what needs to happen. But whether you do that or not is very unclear. I think that's why this, this card is coming in so unclear to me because you have to make a choice. Um, are you going to stubbornly stay in here with other people's expectations, with other people's, you know, even though you can see something now, you might still choose to stay 
this is this is the to stay in the nightmare of other people's expectations of other people's uh, needs and desires you know we have the six of wands here your community was very happy for you and maybe you don't want to let them down now and you don't want to put down that burden and you're going to refuse to put that burden um we also have just accepting these epiphanies and these new understandings coming in returning to some sort of original source of happiness and joy and rejuvenation and setting out on your own to follow your own north star and not the expectations of other people so i think the reason why i'm getting this as a confused energy is that some of you are going some of you are not ready to put the burden down yet of other people's expectations and now that you're you can you and you and you're will you're stubbornly staying trapped because you're refusing to put that down others of you are going to have an epiphany an understanding you're going to return to some sort of place of rejuvenation and inspiration and you're going to be able to head out on your own having put down the burden of other people's expectations and then this is going to bring you into community, a new community, a community um, with more with harmony. Like here, your community is is cheering for you. And I think this is a bit of a reinsurance that you're not going to, as a possible outcome, you're not going to go without a community. Here's here's just a, a, another one, right? You you, you are going to remain con connected to your community here and and to to all of that so all right virgo that was really long and i hope that that was helpful for you and not uh, totally utterly confusing so i hope you have a great week